Hey, today we're gonna to talk about mastermind groups. What happens inside them, or at least what happens inside mine? A lot of you know I've been preparing to host a mastermind intensive retreat this coming November in Nashville. Um, you can get all the information at www.fingerclickinggood.com. Love that URL, fingerclickinggood.com. Um, and, but that's a retreat and that's an event. Uh, but that's based off of where it started because I've got a mastermind group that I have that meets on a regular basis. Um, for a lot of people, that's a new term. For many people, they've heard about masterminding but don't know exactly what it is. Um, and a bunch of you have reached out to me asking, what is a mastermind group? What, what happens inside a mastermind group? Uh, so I, I thought I'd share at least what happens inside my group um, that we have about eight Christian entrepreneurs that meet on a regular basis. First is why masterminding? Well, entrepreneurship is its a lonely thing. Uh, I said that on the, another vlog and a couple of you actually resonated with that. Um, it's an entrepreneur's journey is a lonely journey because you're there by yourself. And so you need relationships, you need community, you need inspiration, encouragement, accountability, um, and you need that support group. So that's that the core basis. That's what a mastermind group is for. The other why is on a very practical basis from a business point of view. Um, however dynamic your leadership team is, it is always great to have outside voices with a diversity of experiences, diversity of um, backgrounds, diversity of industries that people work in to speak into your own. You just get another C-suite level voice to help you with your decision making process, with your vision casting, with your strategic planning. Uh, the what so i recruited initially six guys half a dozen guys um, and eventually we've been um, adding one more one more we're up to eight guys we're trying to get to i think the ideal sweet spot is probably 10 in the group maybe 12 because inevitably some people can't make a meeting and so you want to have a dynamic um, at least quorum for each meeting that you hold okay the how um, our group meets um, remotely because we're all spread across the country. Some groups are in person locally, uh, but we meet every month for two hours and we use Zoom video conferencing. So at the very beginning of the meeting, we have something called a drive-by guest. We invite someone that would be interesting to add to our network uh, to come in and basically give an elevator pitch of explain who they are, what their venture is all about, and share one thing that's working for them in business. And then it turns into a hot seat where we pelt them with questions inevitably, and then we say goodbye. Uh, we encourage one-on-one -on -one interaction offline and i would say in the last six months worth of guests at least three of them are actually now doing some sort of formal business with one or multiple of the members in the group most of the rest of the meeting is basically a mastermind uh, round robin each person takes time to share an update personal and business and then ask one question that we can all pour into and help them solve, figure out, um, basically sounding board advice for it. These monthly meetings provide structure and a great way for us to interact at a high level, but then uh, offline, uh, people have been interacting one-on-one -on -one, um, in smaller groups, and it's just really helped deepen the relationships as we go on. We've been very careful on who we add to the group uh, because it's hard to extract someone once you add them, right? It's a little awkward. Uh, but more importantly, they need to have the same values. At least from my perspective, when you add someone to a mastermind group, it's more important for them to have the same, um, that, that posture of generosity, uh, that posture of humility, the posture of um, excitement and incremental gains and bias for action. Um, those values are important, more important than I guess industry or what they specifically are doing. And I think our group, um, there's many groups out there. I think our group prides itself because I think we've built deeper relationships with, with each other than some of the other groups that we've heard of. Um, and I think it's because of this, is that many groups and group members look at these things as very transactional. I'm gonna join this group so I can benefit. I'm gonna join this group so I can double my business. I'm gonna join this group for me, 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 me. Most of the guys in our group, I would say all of the guys in my group specifically, look at it not transactionally, but relationally. And so if you have a group that's all in and willing to help each other uh, on a moment's notice, like if I call any of the other guys in my group, I know with confidence they'll all pick up the phone 
and spend as much time as I need them to, to help me figure out whatever dilemma, whatever opportunity, uh, whatever question I have, they're gonna help me along as if I'm part of their team and they're part of my team. I feel like this is like a segue into a commercial for uh, consulting by Jenny Catron, talking about culture. Culture, culture, culture trumps everything. Um, so anyway, uh, that's what we do in our mastermind. That's how we do it. Um, that's why we do it. So here's the takeaway for today. Entrepreneurship can be a lonely journey, but you don't need to do it by yourself. Thanks for checking us out here today. I'll be back tomorrow for another episode of the Daily KJTV Vlog. Look for the hashtag. And remember, be social, stay social.